Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church. I'm I'm uh, Minister and Prophet M. G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you, Father, for all that you do. Father, we thank you for the redemption uh, that you uh, allow and you've always allowed and it, it grow stronger and stronger as as Satan's kingdom was destroyed on the cross of Calvary through the um, your spirit that you had go into flesh, a carnal man, a flesh, and Yeshua is his name. And we thank you, Father, for all that you do. We thank you, Father, for that redemption, but the, the works of grace, there's, or it's been cheapened. If you don't understand this works and within grace, that that are it makes it what it is grace of of amendment favor and and many other um other words that um of, of that are part of that they're singularly after of that as well that represents the meaning of grace but the works of grace within grace of repentance and drawing to the waters of life of, of relationship and friendship with Yahweh and the Spirit of God Yeshua it is part of that. And that grace, that amendment favor um, brings you to that salvation. This is why before the cross, God's grace was always there because it speaks more about grace even more in the Old Testament than the New Testament, way far more. But what, what was blocking was Satan. Satan was the, the mediator. You know, even, even though the true mediator is the Spirit of God, Yeshua. But because mankind, Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit, they they cause the nature of Satan to be theirs. And so he usurps their prayers to, towards God. And a lot of you see this in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, a lot of times until the after the cross uh, that Yeshua was on and, and paid for that and, and eradicated him to be in the middle man. Uh, in between uh, man and God. And, and so now he cannot do that if you confess your ways before the mediator of all. That draws you to the water of life of God, Yahweh, Yeshua. And he he listens. He's the high priest of all priests, the, the word of God says. And so we thank you, Father, for these things. And so now we were once far off and not part of God's family. But because of the cross, we're now family. So repentance, the elements of grace, repentance and relationship with God, drawing to the relationship with God, is freely given unto us throughout the cross. And see, this is what made grace in the fullness of what it was, the fullness of what salvation is. And Satan is out of it totally because of what the cross, the blood of the cross, of our sweet spirit of God that came into the carnal nature of flesh of a man, Yeshua. Amen. So we thank you, Father, and we praise you, Father, for this. Amen. We're going to um, do some more uh, study on Jubilees, the book of Jubilees. Jubilees, uh, Yash, uh, uh, Yash, Yash, uh, jo Joseph, Yashif. Sorry. I've been, uh, you know, as you know, I've been praying every day, interceding for all of you. So it gets a little tiring after a while. So give me a little grace on the uh, on that the wording there. But Yashov jo Joseph, okay. Jubilees uh, thirty nine one through eighteen forty one through thirteen. All right, and we're gonna what we do when you study uh, God's word as well as the extensions of God's word that Constantine tried to blot out. And then uh, other people that had a form of godliness took out of God's word, both the Jews and uh, uh, people that claimed to be Christians.
but they weren't. I mean, uh, they, but these things um, are God's word because they, there's a fine line God's word says. And if it, it agrees with what has been established and they all tie together, then, then, it, is, then it is good. But if it doesn't, and there's well far off things, then that's that's not good, you know. Like uh, the the uh, like Judas Carrot book is that's garbage, you know. That's that's one of them. There's many of them like that. So we got to be careful. But there are some that Constantine um, literally was able to, you know, harm or in some ways and and. And thank God for the people putting all that we have in the caves because we got original copies of Isaiah and you know and and to testify those things many other things it's so wonderful but okay so we're gonna be about talking about Joseph and so basically when you do a teaching my fellow ministers you need to draw the path of what you're reading about Okay, and how you can apply it nowadays as well of what their life and what they went through or, or the lesson that you're bringing out. And then also the interaction of similarities of today because God is the same yesterday and today and forever. And all those things, bringing those things out. So you go and find the fact of, of the life of the the. the uh, holy person you're reading about or maybe some things that others did that were wrong are a lesson plan of something in the word and then applying it to today's world today's world and how you can apply it individually and, and getting the people to think about those things that you know that's really important to have that structure in there so let's let's begin amen okay and Jacob dwelt in the land of his father sojourned in the land of Canaan. And these are the generations of Jacob. And, and Joseph was 17 years old when they took him down into the land of Egypt to Potter. For, and the uh, en Enoch of the Pharaoh, the chief cook, brought him and he sat Joseph over all the house and bless of uh, the blessings of Yahweh came up um, on the, the house of Egypt according to the account of Joseph. And Yahweh prospered him in all that he did. So in the time of great trials of Joseph, look at this. He was blessed, even though there was a lot of a lot of people around him trying to push him down. God was pushing him up. Remember that. When you got a lot of people trying to push you down, remember God's going to be the one pushing you up early. You know? And this is what we're just, this is kind of what we're going through right now. And so we got to understand this. We got to see the enlightenment of what, what God did with Joseph and what he's trying to do with us today. According to uh, of Joseph and Yahweh prospered him in all that he did and the Egyptians committed everything into the hands of Joseph for he saw that Yahweh was with him see people will see that God is with us amen and that uh, Yahweh prospered him in all that he did and Joseph appeared parents was commonly and very beautiful in appearance. And his master's wife lift up her eyes and saw Joseph, and she loved him, and besought him to, to lie with her. But he did not surrender his soul. So we can't surrender our soul to, you know, the world trying to put us down and, 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 and get us to go down to their standards. We can't do that. We got to, when we do it a little bit, we got to repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. That's part of grace is repentance and, and surrendering all to God and saying, yes, I want that relationship to be right with you, Yahweh, and, and the Spirit of God, Yeshua, every day. And he remembered Yahweh 
and in the words of which uh, Jacob, his father, used to read from amongst the, the words of Abraham, that no man should commit fornication with a woman who has a husband. For him, the punishment of death has been ordained in heaven before the Most High God, and the, the sin will record against him in eternal books, uh, continuous before Yahweh. And, and uh, Joseph remembered these words and refused to lie with her. And she besought him for a year. But he refused and would not listen. But she embraced him and held him fast in the house in order to force him to, to lie with her. So basically, she was trying to molest Joseph. And a lot of people think that women can't molest men. I No, uh-uh. You know what? It, it can happen, and we, we need to pray against that. Or we need to, you know, those kind of things on both sides. And and the closest of the doors and the house and held him fast. But he left his garment in the hands and broke through the door and fled without uh, her presence. And the woman saw that he would not lie with her, and she uh, uh, clementated him in the presence of, of Yahweh, and saying, The Hebrew servant whom thou loveth sought to force me so that he might lie with me. And it came to pass when I lift up my voice that he fled and left his garment in my hands, because she read, rendered it, ripped it. And, and he was not going to stay around for that garbage, you know, because he knows and he loves God. Joseph did. And that's the way we need to be, you know, on those things. We, we need to not stay around when t people are trying to force us to sin, to force us to do things on their level. We need to do things on God's level. Amen. Through God's spirit and, and people uh, encouraging these things among peoples and doing what is right in God's sight. Amen. It's, it's important. It's important we understand these principles and look on, on, on these holy people in the word of God, like Joseph. Amen. That that would not bow their knee to the pagan th lifestyle of sin of this world. You know, and if they did, they repent very fast and very quickly because God says to do that fast and quickly so that forgiveness of grace can be there and that relationship can remain whole with that you have personally with the God of the universe, the majesty of all things, Yahweh. Because Yahweh means majesty, not out uh, Adonai means Lord as secondary name. Um, but majesty is what Yahweh means. Because he's the majesty of all things. He's beautiful. He's holy. So is his spirit. Yeshua, which is the glory of God. Yeshua is the glory of God. Amen. And so, let's see. Okay. And, uh, let's go with 11B here. And, and the Egyptians uh, saw the garment of Joseph and, and the broken door and heard the words of the, the wife and cast Joseph into prison uh, into the place where the prisoners were kept from the king's imprisonment. And he was there in prison. And Yahweh gave uh, Joseph favor in the sight of the chief of the prison guards and compassion before him. And he saw that Yahweh was with him and that, that Yahweh made all that he did prosper. So even when Satan... And the evil leads on the trap. Try to push you down. God's going to push you back up. Amen. If you're faithful in the little things, God will make you faithful in the greater things. Amen. God's word says it, and, and it will come to pass. Amen. And that's what you see in the life of Joseph here. As every time Satan tried to push Joseph down for uh, uh, the lifestyles of other pagan people around him, God brought him back up and said, no, Satan, you're not going to get your way. This, this guy here, Joseph, it, he lives for me. 
So you're not going to get your way, devil hell. You know? And, and, uh, for he saw that Yahweh was with him, and Yahweh had made all that he did prosper, and he committed all things in his hands. And all the chief of the prison guards knew of nothing that was with him. For Joseph did everything, and Yahweh pr uh, prospered him perfectly. And he remembered there two years. And in those days, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was wroth against his two uh, in, uh, Enoches, against the uh, chief butler, against the chief baker, and put them in the ward of the house of the, of the chief cook in prison, where Joseph was kept, and the chief of the prisoners guards appointed Joseph to serve them and he served before them and and they both dreamed of dreams and the chief butler and the chief cook a baker and they took to Joseph and he interpreted them uh, so that it befell them and then and the Pharaoh restored the chief butler and and his office and the chief baker, he uh, slew as Joseph had interpreted it to be. For the chief butler uh, forgot Joseph in the prison through he had informed him that would uh, befell him and, and did not remember to, the information of the Pharaoh, how Joseph had told him, uh, for he had forgotten. And in those days, the Pharaoh dreamed two dreams and one night concerning the famine, which was to be in the, all the land. And he awoke from his sleep and called all the interpreters of the dream that was in Egypt, the, the, the magicians, the, the, and told them his two dreams. And they were not able to declare them. For then the chief butler remembered Joseph and spake on him to the king and he and brought him forth from the prison and he told uh, his two dreams before him and he says before the Pharaoh that this two dreams were one and he says unto him seven years shall come in which there will be plenty over the land of Egypt. And after seven years of famine, such famine as has not been seen all over the land. And now let the, the Pharaoh point overseer in the land of Egypt. And let, let them store up food in every city throughout the days of the seven of plenty. And there will be food for seven years of the famine. And the land will not perish through the famine, for it will be very severe. And Yahweh gave Joseph favor and the mercy in the eyes of the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh said unto the servant, We will, we will not find such wise and, and discreet man as this man. For the spirit of Yahweh is with him. Yeshua is with uh, Joseph. Amen. The spirit of, of Yahweh is Yeshua. And he appointed him the second in all the kingdom and gave him uh, authority over all of Egypt and caused him to ride in the second chariot of the Pharaoh. And he clothed him with uh, beautiful garments and he put gold chain upon his neck and Herod uh, proclaimed him El El uh, uh, Bakur and placed a ring upon his hands and made him ruler over all the house of, of all people and and said unto him only the throne shall i be greater than thou and joseph rode over the land of egypt and all the prince of the pharaohs and all the servants and all who were king's business loved him 
for he walked uprightness, for he was without pride and arrogance, and and he had no he had no respect respective of persons, and did not accept gifts, but he judged in uprightness all the people of the land. And the land of, of Egypt was at peace before the Pharaoh because of Joseph. For, the, for Yahweh was with him and gave him favor and mercy for all generations before all those who knew him and those who heard concerning him. And the Pharaoh's kingdom was well ordered. And there, and there was no Satan and no evil person within. See, when God's people reign from all levels of government, what can Satan do? Not much. We, we need to learn that lesson in this time of, of things coming up. Amen. And the king called Joseph's name uh, self uh, 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 Timphion and and gave Joseph in, in to a wife of the daughter of Potiphar, and the daughter of, of the priest of uh, uh, Helopolis, the chief cook on that day. Joseph stood before the Pharaoh. He was 30 years old when he stood before the Pharaoh. And in that year, Isaac died. And it came to pass, as Joseph had said, in the interpretation of the two dreams, according as he has said it, there was seven years of plenty over all the land of Egypt. And in the land of Egypt, abundance of produce, a measurement of, of, of 18, 100 um, uh, measurements. And Joseph gathered the food into the every city until they were full of corn until they uh, could no longer count to measure it for the multiplications amen so this is what happens when you follow god even when satan and all the gurus of hell and all the people that want to be wicked try to push you down god is going to keep pushing you out upwardly amen so you remember that. When Satan tries to push the godly down, God's going to push you back up if you're faithful to him. Do you understand that? Amen. God bless you. Realize this. Realize that the life of Joseph is a lesson of life that we can have too. If we only trust in God and, say, and if we can have that innocence of heart that Joseph had. And, and so even, even though this wicked woman Trying to molest me. I'm going to run out of there. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not staying there. I'm not staying there. And when 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 Satan tried to use even even uh, the people that he prophesied those things of those dreams, and they forgot the one forgot it. God's going to prosper him through that dark time, and until that time that God has for you, Amen. So remember. God repeats what he says in the past and he makes it the present because there's nothing that's not um, new of the son that has been already done. Amen. So let us be like Joseph. Let us say that we're going to go all the way in with God. When you have the winning goal and the puck was given to you to hit it just right so that your team can win the championship of, of the hockey game for that year. Are you going to fondle that chance that God has emplaced in that, that, that athlete? No. The athlete is going to hit that puck in the right place, and they're going to win that game, for that, and they're going to be the champion for that year of hockey. Do you understand our life that we, when God has given you that perfect shot, just like that athlete, when he hits that puck right perfectly and scores the winning, the winning shot 
Are you going to be, are you going to be that for God today? Are you going to be that world tennis player that is going to win the, the, the last love point and win that, the, win that game? Are you gonna are you gonna let the other person funnel that chance by not hitting it when you have the ability that God has given you? No, the person's gonna hit that racket, everything in, and gonna win that game. The person racing that car on NASCAR is not going to sit there and say, I, I'm getting tired. But he's almost at the finish line and says, I'm going to park over here. No, when he's in the head of the, and he's about ready, a couple yards from the finish line, he's going to rub that engine with everything, with all his passion and win the game. Win it. God has called us to be winners and not losers. For too long, the churches and synagogues in Israel has had this losing mentality. God has called us to be winners. And you got to understand when Satan tries to push you down, if your life is right with God, God's going to push you back up. Amen. Until finally, Satan just gives up and goes away. But then you try to get something else later. But guess what? You're going to be you're going to be stronger the next time. So that things won't be like it was the first. Amen. And you can see that with the life of Joseph. Amen. When when they when his own brothers threw him in that, that stinky pit. You know? And then when he was sold from that one to that one and to Egypt. And then went from there to Potiphar. And from there to the prison. And Satan was trying to keep him down. God pushed him back up until finally he became the second in command of all of Egypt. Amen. You see that? See how God, faithful God is and how faithful we need to be with God, no matter what. Amen. So God bless you. May God keep you in all his ways and shine upon you today with his glory of, of the Spirit of God, Yeshua, the one that died on the cross for you. God Almighty does sent his spirit into a carnal nature flesh of a man, became a man, the spirit became a man of the earth, and he called himself Yeshua, and he was all spirit in, in the sight of Yeshua, that's who he was. We look too much on the outside of everything, and then we do it to, to the, our precious Lord and Savior, Yeshua, uh, you know, he was our everything. He was the one that was there when he cut the first covenant with Adam and Eve. That was the Spirit of God. That was Yeshua that did that. And the cool of day, that was Yahweh that came down. And he hasn't came back, but he, he will be coming. And in the cool of day, in the millennial, God's going to come down. In the cool of day, just like he did before sin came in this world. And, the, and when they came short of the glory of God and ate the Satan's tree. And instead of God's tree, the spirit of God's tree, Yeshua's tree, the tree of life. Amen. And so God will come in the cool day, in the millennial. But you know what? Yeshua is always going to be there. He's going to be manifested so he can see it. And plus, we're going to get our glorified bodies. And boy, that's going to be a nice day. But I tell you, and he's going to be in Mount Zion. He's not going to be where they're, they're, they're trying to make that thing now. That's why it's abomination, because they're putting it somewhere it's not supposed to be. God's word clearly says it needs to be a Mount Zion, where they need to put it. And if they don't put it there, they, they get a little spanking from God, you know. So they need to do what God wants. Amen. He's the final word. Amen on these things. So he died on that cross for you. Now get right with God. Get saved. You know, you, you repent. You say, I, want, I don't want to climb my ways to wickedness anymore. I want to climb into righteousness and uh, have a relationship with God. And that's what you do. So pray this prayer and be saved together. Okay? Dear God, Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body, as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Come, 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 blessings be with you. Blessings. 
And, and I pray that as you learn, you, you start studying God's word. You'll look into um, going in, in the John books, you know, the Gospel of John, the first and second epistle of John. There's a third, but that that's more of a, a relationship thing going on with family and utter, showing a little bit of interaction there. Um, you can read that as well if you like. It's real short. It's sweet, um, but it's really um, it's not really necessary to read it for, especially for a new believer. I, but this, all the rest of the John books read, and just read them a couple of times through and study them. And I pray that uh, a mentor, some someone that's older and it's been around the block, you know, with God, and they can you can call up or video chat with, or even um, talk uh, talk to them, you know somewhere and and get get uh, the information you need uh, and it's because you're going to have questions as you read God's word when you're new and uh, that's why um, there needs to be people there that, that are called to you know be there for the others that are young amen and that are just got themselves right with God amen so uh, God bless you and Father, I also pray for the uh, sick to uh, recover and let it be your will be done, not us pushing you, but we're just agreeing your will be done today and every day. We, we also pray that it would be a miracle, instantaneous, if it's your will, Father God, that you, you're sovereign and you know ahead of time what is best. And we thank you, Father, for all these saints. Amen. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Honor that brings peace that passes all understanding, none seven, none broken, complete peace of God. God bless you. May God bless you in all his ways. Go on, go on peace because the wholeness is with you. The wholeness of Yahweh, of God's word and prayer, and knowing who the Spirit of God really is. It's Yeshua that was manifested into flesh, carnal nature flesh. But now he is the he is, he is back in his spiritual form. And this is why his disciples were told, don't not expect him over here, over there. What is this describing in the flesh? He's not coming in the flesh. He's coming in the, the spiritual form that we will have because we will be a liking unto him, it says in scripture. Amen. It all goes together. And, and this time of Pentecost, it's a great, great time of acknowledging when, when the Spirit of God came back is who he was. Amen. But he has a spiritual form. This is like we used to have before Adam and Eve came short of the glory of God. See, what happened was the spirit and the form that they had was severed from eating Satan's fruit. And that made the carnal nature thereafter and made the spirit deaden instead of a living spirit because... They were together, and it was never meant for their to be separated. Amen. And so that's what's happened, and that's going to be brought together again. Um, just like uh, likening to what the disciples saw the risen Savior and Lord was. I mean, Yahweh's spirit was. Amen. Yeshua. He was um, had a spiritual form, you know. And, and so we will have a liking unto that. And, and, you know, and they were baffled because he could touch them and he could, it was solid, but yet it was different. You know, that's why they were, and, and, he, and uh, Thomas got late and he didn't see them, you know. And, you know, and, and he, he told his disciples, don't just take any word of it, make sure. And he wasn't doubting like the, the church tells you. No, Thomas was obeying God. And there was a reason for him being late because that testifies that much more that that was truly Yeshua in the spirit right there. Because we needed to know that. And things had to go that way. But he did not doubt. That's not right to say that about Thomas. He was not a doubting Thomas. He was obeying Thomas. He was obedient Thomas to God. And it was meant for him to touch it. I mean, I mean, if you saw Yeshua the way he was 
in his glorified form and his and, and that the spirit form that he was, you would probably be like, wow, too. Because you've never seen anything like that. You only know what we know now, right? So you don't know how you would react, do you? No. We show no most of us would be awestruck and saying, Wow, man, wow. That's about all we can say sometimes with these wonderful things God is doing. Amen. It's the wow, you know, word. And uh, so God bless you. Now I want you to be encouraged and do what God has called you to do. Each of us have a calling and we are meant to figure that out and be encouraged with one another to help encourage that out of us, each of us. Amen. God bless. Shalom to you. I give you a holy kiss. God bless. Amen.